Welcome back to another episode of Jamin's Daily. We're on episode number 15, folks at home. Thanks again for being here with me. Today we're going to open up, get a little personal. Um, I wanted to go over something that's near and dear to my heart. Being my son, his name is Jude, and he has Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. And I wanted to kind of open up, share with the community, the audience, a little something a little personal about me that is a big, a big issue, a big deal in my life, having a child with uh, special needs. I know there are a lot of people out there who are in the same boat who have children with special needs and so I feel like I have a a compelling story that I like to share with you with you guys and um, I have some notes here so I can keep it concise so I just don't trail on some tangent but Jude was born in the summer of 2015 and when he was born Right away, you know, and I have another son who's only 18 months younger, and Jude was my uh, my first child, and so you're when you're inexperienced and you don't have anything to draw from, you know, you as children are progressing, they progress in a particular way, and if you never had any other children, how do you know? You just have like a pamphlet that they give you at the hospital, or you Google the different milestones and things. Jude early on was uh, displaying some delays on all the different benchmarks so much so that even early on I have uh, my sister-in-law who is uh, in physical therapy occupational therapy she was able to help us get some services he qualified for some services and so he had a therapist and I'm talking that not even a year old at months three three months old six months old having a uh, a therapist come and, and work with him because from the very beginning so jude is five years old now but even from birth he was very stiff and when we were would feed him he would fight it he didn't take his bottle well he was very tight and stiff and this is what the therapists are telling us and so they would do different things. This man used to come to the house and he'd have his physical therapy equipment and stuff and work with him and do different things. And, um, you know, you're always hopeful as a, as a parent. You always think, oh, they'll be okay. You don't go there in terms of like worst case scenario. Everything was like, oh, he's okay. He's fine. And that's what everyone is telling you at the same time, too, because no one's, no one's done the work yet. And there hasn't been enough time to diagnose anything so time goes on jude as he is again still as he's getting older at two years old three years old he's still delayed he doesn't walk until he's almost a year and a half he's very clumsy and slow when he falls over he doesn't brace himself enough so he's got all these bruises from falling over and his speech is delayed and so then again now i'm sure a lot of folks who have children with special needs they can probably relate to some of this uh you know you get all the well wishes like oh you know he's just a late bloomer um you know my my kid didn't start talking until he was four years old you get all this anecdotal evidence that helps you you know you need hope because at that time again we're thinking you know, again, maybe he's just a late bloomer. He does develop slower. But then now at the age of, once he starts getting to about three years old, now there's a little more concern. Well, and he starts seeing more doctors because now his his uh, primary doctor and other doctors are starting to get more concerned because he's not talking enough and he's still delayed and all these other um, benchmarks. And I believe at the age of four is when he... Me, younger than that because he had some other issues but he has a neuro a pediatric neurologist and i remember taking him when he was four and they did they did this bench line of testing 
And of course, he's delayed. And at that point, we had already been sending him to a speech therapist. They had diagnosed him with, um, they thought maybe apraxia of speech, which is like a neurological uh, nerve. If I'm getting it wrong, folks, and if you're in the medical field, you know better, please reach out to me, jamensdaily at gmail.com. But they thought it was this apraxia. That's why he wasn't able to talk. And um, the his specialist would s- told me that, well, it could be that. He could also be somewhere on the spectrum and be autistic. But it was too early to tell. So year four, we... Um, you know, we, we go on. This is only a year, a year ago. Because he just turned five in July. So this is July 2019. In the meantime, we're spending money having to get different equipment, braces and things like that for his uh, legs and, and feet to help him walk. Other uh, medical equipment like a vest on his, to help him, his posture and stuff. Ridic- the pricing on this stuff is astronomical, folks. It is almost ridiculous it's amazing i mean a, a a glorified wetsuit to help their posture and stuff 300 bucks probably can't be more than 30 dollars worth of material in it uh, we we have these braces on his legs that he wears at night several thousand dollars folks okay again if we ask me it can't be but a couple hundred dollars worth of material. It's not like it is some kind of advanced technology working mechanics. No, it's like uh, some kind of polymer and molding. So I don't know. I don't want to get into that. But that fourth year goes by. We see the specialist. She says he could be autistic. He could, could be apraxia. We don't know. We're going to look at the uh, that specialist starts working even closer with his therapist. They're communicating. Year goes by. There's some improvement. But at this point, Jude's younger brother, who's a year and a half younger to him, is already, now he's, you know, two and a half, almost three. He's already beginning to talk. He's already running circles around Jude. Because Jude, at this point also, he can't, doesn't run. Very slow and awkward. So, at four years old, so maybe I'm getting, you know, I'm looking at my notes here and I'm getting it wrong. I think it was at three that we saw the specialist. And then it was at four when he was diagnosed. That's it. So, at four years old, we go, I go see Dr. DeLine for the third time. So, I saw, saw her the first time with Jude when he was three. Had just turned three. Then we saw her six months later, and then we saw her six months later after that for the third time. It would have been a year. He's four. And, you know, it's one of those moments I'll never forget for the rest of my life, you know, you know where I was when I hear, or the moment, all that, when I, uh, Dr. DeLine tells me. But So I'm in, the, in this room, in the doctor's office, with my son. And Dr. DeLine says, well, you know, Jamin, after she's done a little bit of testing, she says, well, I don't, I'm pretty confident that he's not autistic because he didn't, I guess he didn't display the certain symptoms, right? And I never thought he was too, a lot of eye contact, very, you know, very engaging. Um, So they didn't think that was, I never thought that. That was what it was. And when the doctor tells you, then all of a sudden I felt there was some relief. I felt, oh, well, great news. She says, actually, what I think it may be is a, uh, a, mus- a muscular disorder. And at that point, you know, I'm, you don't know what you don't know. I'm ignorant of, of muscle disorders, right? It's not like a, something I had researched or looked into. So I'm thinking right away, oh, well, that's good news. We can, surely there's something to resolve, to uh, to treat that, and he'll get better. And she kind of, she didn't say yes or no. I, I think maybe now thinking back on it, it's a little bit of a blur. But 
she was saying that uh, you know we get it was more about the immediate she wasn't trying to get into some like your son has this de- uh, life shortening debilitating disease a genetic disorder she, you know she was like well the next step w- what i want to do is confirm it so she tells me okay, we're gonna go do these tests all the stuff and i remember later thinking man she must have thought i took this really well because somebody just told me this bad terrible news and i was like okay let's we can we can handle this it wasn't until after she left and i'm me and jude go to like uh the, this testing to get more testing done so they started doing genes- uh, genetic testing and you're thinking well why didn't they do genetic testing a year earlier i'll tell you why it's because it's super expensive okay very expensive so they don't they didn't do it until he was four and a lot many boys with dmd don't get diagnosed until later five six seven eight years old and unfortunately it's because i i I would imagine many of these children you know perhaps they don't have uh access to health uh, you know health care or parents who are proactive and so it just gets ignored and the the testing is expensive so we go get the testing done it confirms i remember while i was waiting there though is when i started getting on my phone and looking up genetic disorders and start realizing the gravity of the situation okay what this lady has just told me about my son so i get on the phone with, with my wife and with my family and you know give them tell them the news and you can only imagine you know it's it's almost like a death in the family right tragic news of of something we were um not suspecting not to this level you know for in folks at home you know you can do your own research you can look it up muscular dystrophy and and in particular duchenne's It, it affects boys mainly and one of the deals one or one of the one of the situations that helped me get through it in that moment because yes i cried you know i i full of heartbreak crestfallen right and you, you you break down a bit but you know i don't think rarely since then that was over a year ago have i be get real emotional about it now and uh i think one of the reasons was because we kind of i didn't it wasn't that i expected it but it wasn't from one day to the next something some tragedy happened like i knew something was wrong with my son i knew there was something about him and we didn't know what it was and that he had doctors and specialists and we would find out and then we did and at that point my whole uh attitude changed i was like okay i'm not you know i'm gonna have a son who's gonna have these issues and i can either be woe is me i can be angry at god or i can focus on the solutions or what i can do to make it better what i can do to make him happy and i remember when we started doing um getting with some uh, support groups talking to other p- families and which is in and of itself folks who are maybe in other support groups completely unrelated right but these support groups they're good they do offer support but it's almost sometimes like a double-edged sword because they help you in some ways but then in other ways it, it it's this weird psychological um you know s- cycle of sorts and unless you're in it you it's hard to explain it but so you have these groups and we got a lot of help from those groups we went to see a specialist in massachusetts a world-renowned uh muscular dystrophy clinic and um and my son jude takes daily steroids every day he takes steroids because his muscles are weak there's nothing that you can really do to make him stronger so you can't do like physical therapies like that to make him his muscle it, they're not that's his muscles are lacking a a, a gene uh, or an amino acid maybe i'm trying to remember what it is but it's called um, dystrophin and anyways because he there's a in his genetic code somewhere he's missing something there's an error so he has a ge- genetic disorder and me and my me and my wife did testing and we're not carriers it, it was there's a name for it but it's like a you know random 
um, what's the word? I'm missing it now. But it is just a mistake within nature. This happens. It's a genetic disorder. It's a rare disease. And so they didn't help. I wasn't blaming. Nobody was blaming anybody. And nobody in our family normally, uh, what the doctors are telling us, that when this is, again, since it's genetic, somebody normally sometimes within the family, somebody else has this. A, a brother or an uncle or a cousin or something. None of it. So it was a, a random mutation. So what are the odds, right? But hey, it's a blessing, right? Because I was telling you earlier, I don't think for a moment that I ever... Do you question God sometimes? I guess everybody questions God, right? But to be mad, like to raise your fist and disown God or, or something, it never happened. It never happened. Everything happens for a reason. So here I have this precious child, five years old. We went to go see, so he gets diagnosed at four. Now he's five. We go see Dr. DeLine. I take him again. And he's made some, you know, all kinds of improvement. He goes to a special school, costs an arm and a leg. But he gets therapy. He's surrounded by all, you know, a, a, a rich environment with other children with special needs. And so he goes and sees a specialist, Dr. DeLine. Vocabulary is, is growing. Um, his mobility is getting better. But if you were to be with my child for his five, you, you were to be with him for more than five minutes, you will know that uh, he has, he's special. He's not your normal five-year-old. In all kinds of ways, actually. But, um, so we're trying to find ways to deal with it. And there are days come and go that I don't even think about it. You don't even think of, and I, that's the way you have to, to live. And that's the only way you can, I guess, uh, not go crazy or, or be just this emotional wreck. Is days go by, I don't even think about him having special needs. He's just my son. And... This is how he is. We went to the park. His younger brother is running all over the place. And I have to follow Jude. I'm literally behind him like like this. As he's going, I'm behind him because he can fall and I have to catch him. Or he needs help to, to get up things and I have to help him. And I feel bad for my other son because he he's missing out on having a brother who should be there running, keeping up with him. Actually, who should be ahead of him because he's older. And he doesn't have that. So that kind of breaks my heart from, you know, if I sit here and ponder on it. So I don't. But, um, so yeah, we, we went to the park. We do the same things that normal people do. And it's easy now because he's young. It's going to be much harder 10 years from now. But, you know, just focusing on the present. I put out a, a video on my Facebook about, you know, they call the present, the presents, the present's called the present for a reason. Because it's a gift from God. So take it day by day. One of the, you get all kinds of advice from everybody when you're in this situation. And I remember, I think it may have been Dr. DeLine or maybe there, some doctor, somebody told us, maybe it was even a nurse. But they were saying how the children, in many of the, many cases, again, because they're very young, the, the parents take it the hardest. And the, it's the parents are the ones who were you know, having a hard time with it. And the doctor said, you were, you know, so that we can get our mind right is that these children, a lot of times they tend to focus on what they can do. Whereas the parents are always focusing on what they can't do. So that was kind of like a aha moment where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to focus on what he can't do. We're going to focus on what he can do and try to help him do those things. And modify all the other things that need to be modified so he can do it, just maybe differently. So, as Judas progressed, uh, let me, let's get into his medicine because that's a, a unique story in terms of the, the steroids. So, steroids are cheap. The, I think one type of steroid, Prezidone, very cheap. And um, I think it's like, four, it's like on the $4 Walmart list, okay? But these steroids, the, you know, the normal steroid has a lot of um, side effects, right? Lots of side effects. And in most people, you take 
if you abuse steroids, you have all kinds of uh, long-term ramifications, which unfortunately they don't. That's not much uh, a consideration for boys with D, uh, DMD or uh, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy because their lifespan is not very long. So they're not worried about what the daily steroid use is going to do to their kidneys when they're 60. Okay, so Jude takes. Uh, he was. We were told oh, we, you need to put him on daily steroids, and here are all the the side effects possibly. And then the doctor is like, "Well, you can take this other steroid. That is um, a synthetic, a newer one, has less side effects." So we're like, "Okay, that's great." Then when you go and look at it, it's like somebody saying, "Hey, yeah, you drive a Toyota Corolla. Well, here's a Ferrari. This one's way better. It goes faster." But then, well, here's the price. And that's basically the same thing with these steroids and in drugs. They're like, oh, here's the steroid that's cheap that your insurance is going to pay for. And then here's this other steroid, which is better, that your steroid, that your insurance won't pay for because it's like $4,000 a month. I'm not exaggerating, folks. It's a ridiculous amount of money. So when there's a will, there's a way, though, folks. So we do some research. Don't ask me how, but we were able to get the better steroid. We submitted to some programs, and then over time, we got approved for deductible assistance. So again, there, when there's a will, there's a way. So we were able to get the the uh, the better steroids with the less side effects. But it took a lot of time and effort, folks. So, uh, and he hasn't had a lot of you know a lot of. Either it must be working because we, he gets steroids every day and very little, very little side effects so far. He's only had maybe one or two rage, rage, uh, roid rages. Uh, but all these things, one of the things we're trying to do that I'm hoping I'm going to do just by talking about it is raise awareness now. So then it becomes a we need to be raising awareness. We wanted to raise awareness about. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So we're trying to start a foundation, the Jude Aleman MD Foundation. And we actually had the ball rolling. We had found an event center. We had found people to volunteer and to vendors to donate and give discounts because we were going to have a gala for Jude and raise money, not just for him, but for others mainly mainly for others in order to qualify for like a, a non-profit and obviously spread the word uh, be i wanted to be kind of like a celebration of his life and uh again we had it was we had a lot of people are you know interested and then the covid19 hit and all it all got this happened we were already kind of getting the ball rolling in february and in march and we had a lot of people Again, wanting to help. And we were actually supposed to do it this month in September. And we were hopeful, you know, June, July, that maybe we might still be able to do it. But then, you know, we ended up canceling it probably over a month ago. We realized there's just no way. So we had to cancel. Not cancel. We postponed the gala. So God willing, next year, I think, probably be the best time to do it. Maybe next spring. We will have a gala for for Jude and um, raise a lot of money for a good cause and have a good time and really just turn this whole tragedy on its head, okay? We can be down, but I don't want to be. We're going to be up. You know, we're all the way up, all right, folks? And I don't feel sorry for my son. I don't feel sorry for myself, okay? He has a... Is this horrible disease? Again, folks, look it up. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. And I just now I'm very selfish with this time. You know, when I when I'm with him, I think I find myself staring at him sometimes too. Like I, I'm sure other fathers with their normal children do this too. But now sometimes when I'm a little more emotional about it at, at, at times sometimes again when you let it when you let it sink in it can it can be the good thing is you don't you just live your life and the fact of the matter is i wanted to share this with you folks at home so you know a little bit more about the host i don't want to get too personal on things but this i i feel 
it's personal, but it's something that I'm wanting to share, wanting wanting to use this platform to to advance. Uh, whether it's raising raising funds, raising awareness for uh, not only not only my son, but for muscular dystrophy in general. There's all kinds of uh, things to be hopeful about in terms of uh, gene therapy and things. So I'm I'm very hopeful that uh, there's going to be progress for my son that will continue. Because he's at, you know, in, in his uh, stage of his, uh, or progression of of the disease, he's still at this point where he, he does make progress. He makes progress. And what happens is these boys, they progress, they progress, and then they, they hit a, a, wall, a plateau. And they plateau. And then at some point, normally when they get older, they get bigger and gravity becomes their enemy. And they don't have the muscles to hold themselves up. So they become, you know, wheelchair bound and all kinds of other um, problems that are associated uh, with that. You know, they have weak lungs, heart. So by the time they're in their 20s, you know, I don't know. I think the average age is in the mid 20s, but less. It can be less. So. And normally when they reach puberty and start getting bigger, 14, 15, that's when they start to kind of decline. And so what I'm hoping is, you know, that's 10 years from now. Jude's 10. Jude's 5. 10 years from now, he'll be 15. I'm hoping in these 10 ne- the, the next 10 years, there could be some advances in this gene therapy. There's a show on Netflix called... Dang it. What's it called? I'm going to have to look it up. Dang it. Let's let's look it up right now, folks. Why not? I could edit it out or we can just make this one minute longer and just I'll look it up. Right? Netflix. It was Netflix. CRISPR movie. Unnatural selection, folks, is what it's called. And it highlights this technology called CRISPR. And CRISPR is like an acronym for something else. Like cell rejuvenation, something, something, something. Who knows? I'm just making that up. But it's where they're able to splice and modify genes and then implant them and do this and that. And, and it's revolutionary. The problem is it's too revolutionary. It's almost like playing God. So, yes, you can cure all these diseases, but then it's like Pandora's box. And this is kind of what this um, documentary, it's a series, I think there's several episodes. I saw the first one. It's, there are, they're each an hour long. Super interesting. You won't regret watching it. But it will also give, open up your eyes on a lot of this. And, and mainly, it, it affects my son. He has a genetic disorder. And so the only way to cure that is at the genetic level. And so that's what this uh, unnatural selection talks about. And the technology it's called CRISPR so you can look it up google it folks but I'm gonna leave leave y'all with that I hope I um, shared some important information with you I hope maybe we're a little closer now me and you folks at home maybe you know me a little better perhaps feel where I'm coming from from time to time and uh, you know we're hopeful hopeful closing is that uh, you know the goal is for Jude to get better is this better mean you know normal does better mean like everybody else no better just means he's happy right now he's got a he he's a happy child and that's my goal so with that folks uh, even more so now than ever For Jude, for my son, don't give up on us, because the best is yet to come.